official visit to Libya, the Crown Prosecution Service commissioned a secret report into the murder of Yvonne Fletcher. It concluded that Baghdadi and Matuk could be prosecuted for conspiracy to murder. We only know of the report's existence thanks to a leak to the Daily Telegraph two years later. This report showed for the first time in clear detail how the British government had enough evidence to try and persuade Libya to allow us to charge people over the killing of Yvonne Fletcher, but nothing happened. It laid out 25 years of an police investigation in clear as daylight detail of what the evidence was, and yet the timeline showed that when they had the opportunity, our politicians muffed it. The government told us that they are not aware that the report has ever been seen by them or the previous administration. But the investigation into Yvonne Fletcher's murder did not appear to progress after the meeting. However, the normalizing of relations did allow trade deals to be struck. On the same day Blair and Gaddafi met, BP signed a £450 million oil deal with Libya. There's no doubt about it. Trade is Trump justice. Oil is more expensive than blood. We have given up the life of a police officer for a few barrels of oil. Her killer at the moment is free. We are doing a lot of trade with Libya, a country that is harboring a police killer. That, to me, is outrageous and completely against the principles of any civilised country. The Foreign Office insists that they have never linked commercial considerations to the Fletcher case. But in the United States, Congress senators are currently investigating whether such oil deals influence the release of this man. The release of Lockerbie bomber Abdul Basit Ali Al Magrahi, who was suffering from terminal cancer on compassionate grounds, was widely condemned. There was a hero's welcome for the man convicted of killing 270 people. The Scottish government firmly denies that oil deals played any part in his release. But Al Magrahi's return immediately raised hopes that perhaps a deal could be done that would assist the investigation into Yvonne Fletcher's murder. For those close to Yvonne Fletcher, it was a huge opportunity. There's a chance here for El Magrahi to go back to Libya, and in return, Britain received people who could be charged for the killing of Yvonne Fletcher, possibly in a third country. But Baghdadi and Matuk are no ordinary citizens of Libya. They are close confidants of Colonel Gaddafi, who have thrived under his patronage. They are the inner circle of Gaddafi. They have been handpicked by Gaddafi 30 years ago, they have been groomed by him, they have been indoctrinated by him. So it's, it's a relationship between, if you like, uh, a, an absolute leader and his followers or a teacher and students. They look to him as, as, as the leader, as the mentor, as the inspiration. That's, they get all their orders from him, all directives from him, and they deal, most of them, they deal with him directly. The Metropolitan Police say they're committed to identifying those responsible for killing Yvonne Fletcher, and officers visited Libya in August this year. But they will neither confirm nor deny whether they have ever interviewed Baghdadi or Matuk. Today, they have key jobs in the administration of Libya. Baghdadi is in charge of the revolutionary committees, and Matuk is the Minister of Public Administration. Their elevated status sickens the union of rank-and-file police officers. The fact that you have two men who are at liberty in Libya uh, who should be facing trial in this country for their actions and involvement in the murder uh, is something that hurts us. The fact that they have led a very good life uh, are now government ministers and are leading a, an exceptionally good life, I would imagine, in Libya hurts even more because the families of Yvonne Fletcher are not leading a great life. They're still suffering. You know that, I know that, and a lot of police officers are still deeply hurt by what's happened to one of their colleagues. There is injustice there, and it needs to be righted. So just what are the prospects of either of these two men ever facing trial? The Foreign Office insists it is committed to the investigation and raises the case with the Libyan government at every possible opportunity. But to get Matuk and Baghdadi into court would require Colonel Gaddafi to hand over two of his closest acolytes. I do hold out some hope 
but I think that the pressures against it will be very great, very great. Um, one of the difficulties about reform in Libya or in any country more generally is that if you talk about reform, you talk about some kind of putting right the wrongs that were done in the past, that implies that people who were guilty of crimes in the past are going to be punished. Well, you can't expect them to be very enthusiastic about that. They'll be moving heaven and earth to make sure it doesn't happen. But surely a young woman who was murdered in her prime whilst doing the job she loved deserves better than this. For those close to Yvonne Fletcher, the best way to honour her memory would be for someone to be brought to justice.